I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. I will not be wearing this costume the entire time because it turns out the elf costume is the same color as a green screen and it is very hard to edit out, but if I stay really still, it works. I don't, I don't think I can do that for this whole video, so. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas. Also, this hat really hurts my head, but this was fun. Alright, uh, we'll get into the real video now. Thanks for watching. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays! Oh, that's a... that's graduation. What's up, YouTube? Jim and I, Johnny, back again with another compilation of creepy TikToks to make you question everything. This is it! We've made it! You might be wondering why I'm wearing a lion costume. Well, my original elf costume didn't really work for recording purposes. We had some technical difficulties, and that hat was really uncomfortable. And I thought I'd use all of my costumes for my TikToktober series, but then a Christmas miracle happened, and I found this costume which is technically a bathrobe. I'm not gonna wear it the whole time, but honestly, this is just gonna be a long episode and I want it to be comfy. So strap in for the ultimate Insert Your Holiday Here Marathon! Beep, beep, beep. Tight. Who's your favorite lion? Mine's probably the one we saw in that video the other day in that Roar movie that ate all them people. It was tight. Good job, lion. Do what you're supposed to do. Close second is Joe Exotic's lions. <laughs> and then a third near and dear to my heart, obviously. The Cowardly Lion from The Wizard of Oz. If I were king of the forest! Grew up with him. Classic. Am I missing anyone? Let me know in the comments. Now, without further ado, let's jump right in to the ultimate intro you're already here right on. Alright, sorry, I just wanted to get one last one in. Alright. Tight. Let's jump right in. Six scary videos. Oh. I think I've seen that before, but. Oh, man, that was a close call. on fire? That's not good. I don't think you can fit through that. Whoa! That was impressive. Oh my god. Bull didn't have any horns. That still would not have ended well for that guy. What? Why did he just... Well, that last one just looked like it hurt. I hope she's okay. Uh, that train conductor looked pissed. <laughs> I don't know why you would just like fall down. At, oh, first of all, I don't know why you would try to run in front of an oncoming train. Because you might fall. It's always a possibility. You might fall. And if you fall, you might just freeze. Just like that guy did. So, lesson here. Don't run in front of trains. First lesson of the ultimate interior holiday here, Martha. Hi, my name is Bianca. Nice. And this story happened to me when I was eight. I used to sleep with my grandma since my family and I lived in small apartments. My family and I started getting ready for bed one night. I fell asleep and everything is normal. But later in the night, I would say 3 or 4 a.m., I wake up on my side. I open my eyes and all I see is this black shadow woman standing over me. I couldn't move, talk, or scream. I closed my eyes again, and when I opened them, there was a woman squatting down looking at me, and she just vanished in th into thin air. Days later, me, my brother, and nephew were playing tag in our apartment. I ran past my room trying to tag my brother and I looked over and saw the exact same shadow woman that was watching me sleep just standing there watching me. This story really gives me chills since I still live in the apartments to this day. Ew. This 800 year old book contains one of the most cursed images on the planet. So I already know that some of you are gonna say this guy looks like he's straight out of South Park. But some historians <laughs> say that this is the most accurate portrait of the devil ever drawn. I'm gonna tell you more about it, but if you want the full deep dive and a couple other scary stories, check out this week's episode. This is the book. It's known as the Devil's Bible, and it's the largest surviving book from the Middle Ages. For reference, it's three feet long and 165 pounds. 
Time. Historians can tell it was written by one person and they think it would have taken 20 years to write, but the legend says that it was written in one night. The story goes that back in the 1200s, there was a monk that was sentenced to death. He was going to be walled alive, which is where you stand in place and they build this little coffin around you and then you just wait to die. But the monk pleaded with the judge and said, if you let me live, I will write the entirety of human knowledge into one book and I'll do it in one night. The judge agreed, but a few hours after the monk started writing, he realized he wasn't going to be able to finish that night. He ended up making a pact with the devil so that he could finish the book in one evening. And in return, he drew an accurate portrait of the devil he saw inside of the book. It's also believed that anyone who's ever owned the book has also been cursed, which I get into in the episode, so check it out. I'll have to go listen to that episode of her podcast because it's really interesting. And her, her TikToks are always really well put together and really good. She does really good content, so I'm sure she does a great podcast. So I have to go check that episode out because it's how interesting. I love books from, I love old books. Like this, That's such a cool, like what did they think was going on back then? What did they know that we don't know anymore? What do they think they knew that we now know they didn't know, you know? Yeah, this next guy too, I like his, I don't know. I like most of these people's content. I I cut out the people's content that I don't like, so I guess that makes sense, right? Or I make fun of the content sometimes, and that I put in the video. Let me show you a picture with a terrifying backstory. This is Franklin Floyd, and that is not his daughter. The little girl is Franklin's stepdaughter, Suzanne Savakis. He kidnapped her in 1974 when she was under 10 years old. Now this is where it gets disgusting. So he would go on to raise her as his own daughter and put her through high school under pseudonyms. Then in 1988, he had a son with her. You heard that right. The sick man had a son with his own stepdaughter. Then a year later, he married her under the fake name of Tanya Hughes. And it gets wilder. A year after that, Suzanne decided to leave him and take her son Michael with her. Later that year, she was sadly found beaten and bruised on the side of a road. She then died of complications in a hospital. Keep buckling up because it gets wilder. Michael, Suzanne's son, went into foster care. He was then adopted and then kidnapped by Floyd in 1994 and never seen again. Absolutely insane story. I didn't like that one so much. But good content. I mean, it's a good video. Just, oof. A good video, yeah. Also, true crime, not really my thing, but... You know, sometimes they get, we, we'll get them in there. Scary TikTok videos, part 181. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah seen bro. One. Those mirrors, bro. Yeah, seen one. It was fucking weird, bro. I remember it was at this house that we live in right now, too. And there's two glass sliding doors. And I remember the one on the right, it was open. And he moved in and he started waving down to like, get my attention, like teasing me. As soon as I looked that way, it moves out the way. I couldn't tell what he was wearing, but I remember it was like small and it had like a red hat. And I was like, well, what the fuck was that? I thought I was tripping. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to ignore it. And I go back to eating and again, it happened. And he does the same thing. I get up, I open the door and nothing was there. And it happened like, like I could you not four or three times until like I got up, I closed the door, I took my cereal, I threw it away and I was like, man, I'm gonna go to bed. Fuck this guy. Recently, my godmother, she told me a story when she was seven years old, she was out in the front playing with her like siblings and stuff. Out of nowhere, she hears like giggling and like, she doesn't know where it's coming from. And then she turns around and then she sees four duendes, but they're like dancing and laughing, but like they're in the formation of, you know how like when they're holding up a coffin, like two people in the front, two people in the back, mm -hmm. they were in that formation. They were holding a little coffin and uh -huh. The way she described them, like they were uh, wearing a big ass sombrero, big ears, the big nose and stuff, the typical duende description or whatever. And then her mom turns pale and she thought she was tripping because she saw the exact same thing too. I know in the San Bernardino area, we're like near Cal State, San Bernardino, it's like a mountain area. Going up to uh, Lake Arrowhead, that's where like uh, yeah. people still live up there saying that there's duendes yeah. roaming around that area. Yeah. I think there's lots of things in this world that are unexplained. And that's what I want to do is explain them all. I want to write an encyclopedia on the unexplained. It's my ultimate goal for life. But what interesting unexplained topics would you like to see me explain? Or if there is no explanation, dive into. Because that is kind of the nature of an unexplained topic. There's probably not an explanation. But I'll do my best. And eventually, I'll go duende hunting and Bigfoot hunting. But I do want to do really cool things with this channel. And yeah, going like cryptid hunting. That would be not hunting. Like literally, I'm not trying to hurt or harm anything. I just would like to capture evidence with 4k cameras and you know go ghost hunting paranormal investigating and the winchester house and uh want to go to that hotel that they shot the shining in cecil hotel downtown la although it's pretty dangerous i uh, definitely wouldn't do that alone the hollywood forever cemetery i might do that i'm gonna try to do that soon it'll be fun all right i want to tell you all about one of the scariest experiences my cousin tanner ever experienced when he was home alone 
He was in his early teenage years and he was getting packed to go to a friend's house. And throughout his house, there were always a bunch of different toys from his younger siblings. His youngest sibling had one of these toys that was called a motion activated baby doll, which means any motion in front of it or any touching of the doll will make it activate, you know, make baby noises or cry or do whatever. So in all the silence of him being alone, he was getting packed and all of a sudden he heard that doll activate. That doll started crying, making noises, laughing, giggling, doing all the creepy ass noises that dolls do. <laughs> so he kind of sat there very, very just frozen. It stopped going, so he kind of started packing a little faster because it just started getting a weird vibe in the house. Then he heard footsteps get louder, and then the doll activated again. This is a direct quote from Tanner. He left all of his clothes he was packing and literally jumped down the steps and ran to his friend's house. Tanner's a smart man. I would have been up out of there too. Let me tell you about the time I caught a full <laughs> no, body guy. apparition right. on camera at Bobby Mackey's Music World. And if you don't know what That's Bobby cool. Mackey's Music World is, it is one of the most haunted places in the entire state of Kentucky. And if you go on Max or Discovery Plus, it is the very first episode of Ghost Adventures where Zach Bagans, mm -hmm. Nick Groff, and Aaron Goodwin went to. And Zach was viciously attacked at this location. It was January 2022 in the middle of a snow blizzard. We literally almost died on the way there just because of how much we were slipping and sliding on the roads. So the night there was miserable to be honest. The entire building felt exactly how I did outside and the temperature was, oh my God, it was, the temperature hurt. So investigation aspect of the night was horrible and I cannot wait to make my return and actually do this place justice. But in one particular moment, we sat a static night vision camera up in a corner facing the longest hallway part of Bobby Mackey. And when we walked away and what we captured on camera, I'm gonna show right here, is absolutely astonishing. Mm. Oh my God, that's weird. Man, that was crazy. Bobby Mackey's is definitely a place I would like to visit someday. I've been to a lot of haunted places. Uh, a few places in Branson, Missouri. A bunch of places in Oklahoma, Kansas that are supposedly haunted. But I would like to do investigations in them with cameras and stuff. I always just used to do it for fun, but I would like to do, just to ex try to experience it and see if it's real. But I would like to do it with cameras and equipment. That would be, it's going to be sick. I'm going to do that someday in the future of this channel. So keep an eye out for that. But also, in the meantime, if you've had any paranormal experiences, write them in. Send them over. I'll put my email on the screen right here or you can you know hit the qr code and uh just send them dm them over whatever but i would like to do a video of user submitted scary stories yeah i don't know it might be lame but i want to try it so if you have any scary stories then send them in maybe i'll read them in my next video be sure and let me know if you'd prefer to remain anonymous because if not i'll probably credit you final photo of the douglas brothers is truthfully one of the most sinister that's even out there this is the last known photo of the douglas brothers and it was taken by their friend michael when i first looked at it i was trying to figure out where exactly they were but they're basically in an underground sewer system they were kind of daring each other to go in there and explore it but if you look right in between them towards the background you would see that there's something very wrong with this picture looking towards the central back of the photo you would see they were not alone in the tunnel just this haunting outline of a face of someone else who was down with them. Japanese folktales, the boy who drew cats. This is a story of a young boy who has a unique talent of drawing cats. In a small village in Japan lived a poor but kind-hearted elderly couple. They had a young boy who had always been a bit different from other kids. While the other kids play, the boy had a passion for drawing cats. He would draw cats everywhere he could and on any surface he could find. His obsession and passion for drawing cats grew even more as he grows older. His parents worry of his future and eventually decided that it was time for him to leave home and find a more conventional passion. The boy set off and arrived at an abandoned temple in the mountains and decided to spend the night. He noticed that the temple is overrun with rats and mice. To protect himself, he began drawing cats on the temple's walls. That night, something happened. The cats he drew came to life. They pounced on the rats and mice, chasing them away and saving the boy. He continued to live in the temple and still drawing the cats. His fame spread throughout the region and the temple became known as the place where people could seek protection from mice and rats. One day, a big and powerful rat came to challenge the boy. So the boy drew an even larger and more powerful cat which defeated the rat. The boy's reputation as a protector grew and people from all over the world came to the temple to pray for protection. The boy lived out his days as a famous figure thanks to his talent for drawing cats. I know that one wasn't creepy but 
how sweet and also a good lesson in getting better at things and how effort into something though it may seem futile will eventually pay off in the end i think it's a nice story and also i was wondering recently where that guy's videos have been i haven't seen his videos in a while and i like his videos they're usually creepier than that but that was nice nice change of pace for a second exploring an abandoned home in the woods when this was captured doesn't that look like an early settlement style chimney there it does What's interesting is the chimney looks like an older style than the house looks. Yeah. I'm thinking that this was probably built in the early 1900s. Charles Spoon. Well, that's cool. How old do you reckon that is? That's old. It's not silver, it's, it's brass, silver plated. Look. Uh, look at the entire stump. Look at that. Petrified. Yeah, it is just about petrified, ain't it? Sure is. Looks like it was cut down, I guess, with an ax. Let me set the light down. I'm gonna touch it. This is an old tree right here. That's for sure. At one point, either this was a one-room house or it was a two-room house with a dog trot the whole way down the middle kind of hard to tell from here it's uh been a lot of pillars were placed under here yeah a lot of floor supports so that's a 1958 coke bottle right what is that <laughs> oh that's weird here, here. That is strange. You heard that, right, Dan? Yes, I did. <laughs> not funny at all. No, not cool. Not cool. I told you this place felt creepy. All right, uh, well, we're going to go ahead and get out of here. Um, so I hope you guys have... Man, that was cool. And they just seem like an adventure channel, not even like a paranormal channel. Oh, man. That's cool. I want to go find some abandoned places. There is, I used to know a ton of abandoned, of abandoned places. I remember back in Oklahoma, I'll go film some stuff there. And if any of them are still standing, most likely they've all been torn down by now. Man, how creepy. They got out of there quick, didn't they? Never seen somebody that old move that fast. What a vulnerable position to be in. Underneath the house, in the crawl space. As soon as they, after that, they were out of there. They said, yeah, we're, we're going to go now. Yeah, smart men. Someone in a skeleton costume. Cow's certainly looking at it. It looks like someone scooting back and forth in a skeleton costume. driving down a haunted road when they see this. Late one night at around 4.40 a.m., a woman by the name Jace was driving down Highway 897 in Alberta, Canada, when suddenly from the dark, empty road, something horrifying shows itself to them. Go faster! Curious as to who or what was that, Jace decides to turn around to get a better look and sees this.
strange enough, what looks like a woman dressed in late 50s clothing can be seen walking by in the pitch black night. This is probably the creepiest village in Japan. Hidden in the mountainous valley of Tokushima, a village with a population of scarecrows far outnumbering that of humans. Known as the Kakashi no Sado, or the Scarecrow Village. The tale begins with a native, Ayano Tsukimi, who returns to her roots only to be greeted by empty houses, silent playgrounds, and the only school in the village that closed its doors forever. Yeah. The haunting silence inspired Tsukimi to repopulate the village, albeit in a peculiar manner. In 2003, the first scarecrow emerged. Crafted with love and nostalgia, it bore a resemblance to Tsukimi's late father. This silent figure was soon joined by others, each representing departed or long-gone villagers, Jeez. slowly filling the village with lifelike dolls, occupying benches, and abandoned homes. While the dolls are designed to create a more vibrant and welcoming village, the daily increase in their numbers has led many to consider the village, akin to a horror story come to life. If you see this, don't go near it. A creepy video was submitted to these dark adventures where a mother is arriving home with her son, when suddenly, the kid notices a man hiding in the woods, watching them. <sighs> what looks like a man can be seen by the woods completely still, and as the dog begins to growl at it and goes towards it, this happens. Notice the dog, it stops, then freezes. Nix doesn't know what to make of it. Oh, that's weird. After getting closer to it, the dog stops and freezes in place. Could this be a skinwalker trying to lure this family? Let me know what you think. Well, I certainly don't think that was a skinwalker, but I do think that's some really compelling evidence of a ghost or some sort of apparition. It's wild. Even the, like when the dog reacts to it, you, you kind of have me sold. I'm not going to lie. You can kind of see through that guy. It's so weird. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it could be faked, obviously. Like they all could. Yeah. The dog reacting to it. I don't know, man. That was a weird one. Yeah, that's right. We got multiple costume changes in this one. And yeah, I know how to tie a tie. So I'm going to be an unnamed wizarding school student for the rest of this episode. Merry Christmas. This very strange video is circling the internet. It was supposed to be this very strange phenomenon happening in the middle of the ocean. A couple of people inside of a boat captured it on camera. I'm going to show you guys the entire video. Some people are relating this to underwater volcanoes. But I'm not exactly sure if this is the case. So I'm going to show you guys the video. You tell me what you think is going on here. Check this out. I saw this in one of my early, like one of my first reaction videos that I first person posted attention, on this channel. Pay attention, look at the size of this thing. It probably only has like a, few, a couple hundred views. So I'm gonna probably leave this in because I never found an answer for what this is. Does anybody know? So it looks like a big block look at or this something. Over here. But then yeah, it like shoots up mist right there weird dude what's going on here guys what is your take don't forget to like and follow and stay weird like he said don't forget to like and follow and stay weird i like that guy i'm gonna go i'm gonna find him as soon as this is over and go subscribe to him because what a great motto like and subscribe and stay weird and stay creepy i'm not done i'm just we're gonna go longer i don't even know how long i've gone but long enough for two two costume changes this man had lost his daughter and the whole town thought she had been kidnapped what is it? At that very moment, many little girls were being abducted and trafficked on the dark web. But one evening, he found his daughter. But unfortunately, this moment of joy quickly turned into a nightmare. It was horrifying. In a cemetery? It says he finds his little girl from the dark web. 
ya, ya puse el zoom por eso mejor me esperé a lo que ustedes me dijeran can anybody tell me what he's saying I don't see your other clowns of the dark web in the middle of a hike these guys come across this unfortunately we have no more news of these people but the end gives us an idea of what they have become nos viene siguiendo un payaso nos viene siguiendo un payaso Fernando ahí está, ahí está mira amigos, amigos Sí, es ahí va Sí, son nos viene siguiendo mi gente no sé qué hacemos amigos, amigos Mira cómo nos. Algo, mira, mira los brazos, los brazos, ¿cómo no dice que vayamos? Is he standing there with the ¿Qué hace aquí? Mira, nos está haciendo señas. My name is Abby, and I had a dream about Jesus or an angel sent from him. I still remember the time. It was 1.15 a.m. I was at a big water fountain with my best friend and a girl I've never seen in my life. But yet, it felt like I've known her for years. We were just standing there talking, and then I saw this bright big light with a person inside of it. But it wasn't just a person. That person had giant wings. I couldn't see his face or anything. It's like I was seeing a shadow. Then he said to me, Take my hand if you trust him, and I'll guide you to him. At that point, I was confused, but still walked up to the light because I was amazed by it. When I touched the bright light, everything suddenly disappeared, and I woke up realizing it was just a dream. I wasn't scared or confused anymore, but for some reason I was breathing very heavily, as if I was scared, even though I wasn't. To this day, I still wonder what Jesus was trying to tell me, because he must have gi given me that dream for a reason. About two months later, my brother came out to my mom, saying he had a horrible dream about the devil and some more. He said he saw ugly creatures with big wings, all deformed and messed up everywhere. Then he said something was shouting, get ready because a war is almost here. Everyone on planet earth will disappear, war is close by. He said he saw angels and demons fighting and fire was falling from the sky, killing everyone. He said he saw hell and when he did, he woke up scared, breathing heavy and couldn't control his breathing until he slept it off. When he told me that, it gave me goosebumps from the part where he said that war is close and that everyone will disappear. It's pretty weird if a little kid had that dream. Kids probably shouldn't have like really crazy dreams like that unless they're watching crazy movies and that kind of stuff. Especially if it felt really real, then I don't know, maybe the kid's a little prophet. But I do wonder, how often do people have those like prophetic types of dreams or visions that don't align perfectly with what they believe in? Like has an atheist, like a full hardcore atheist ever had a vision of an angel and God? I mean, maybe it's happened. If you've ever, uh, I'm curious actually. If anyone out there has ever had any kind of, I don't know, spiritual experience that didn't align with what they thought was the truth? I'd be curious to hear about your experience and I would love to talk about it. So let me know in the comments. Signs that you won't believe actually exist. Right, the first one. If you do not know where this trail goes, do not try and find out. I am turning around. Warning, a wild oh. monkey appeared. The wild monkey bites brutally. Don't feed him and don't fight him. Even if you fight him, you can't win. <laughs> I definitely won't be fighting him. Only those who strongly believe in rebirth should risk going near. Nah. Be aware of falling helicopters. Be aware. Waving children, please wave back. What? Road ends in water, 300 to 1,100 feet. Last car parked here is still missing. Definitely not parking there. You had no idea that such parasites existed near you. In the Amazon, locals started complaining of groin pain after swimming in the river. When doctors x-rayed their organs, their surprise was enormous. 
but not because of the size of the organs, but because of what was inside those organs. This little catfish known as a kandaroo is not cute at all, believe me. That's because it feeds on human genitalia by entering them through the urethra. The reason is that it's attracted to the ammonia odor found in human urine. So, every time you do it in the water, it reacts instantly and heads to where it needs to go. And there are two real horrible things about it. First, it's almost impossible to see it, as it's very thin and almost transparent. Second, if it's already inside, it usually releases spikes, making it almost impossible to get it out of the organ. This leaves only one way out. Surgery. But worst of all, it's far from being the only parasite in the water. Alright, then I've got it. Ew. He was driving along at a leisurely pace, but suddenly... Sully, call the camera! Sully! <laughs> Do you know the Slender Man? That tall, skinny, creepy man from a creepy pasta that's become famous to this day. Slender likes to wander through forests, countryside, and other secluded places, far from prying eyes. But this creature can also be found in the middle of the city, or even in your own home. Like in this video. <laughs> Have you seen that? And I have an advice for you. Be very careful, and don't stare at it for too long. a car crash for a slender man video so that's weird but what if slender man is just the fresno nightcrawlers that put on a suit and they're trying to be more human so they put on a suit and now they're walking around as slender man everywhere because that's what he looks like he looks like the fresno nightcrawlers in a suit I did the side by side thing again yeah i don't know i'll find a spot it's somewhere in there you guys get it they're up here jeez that's my new theory. Slender Man is just the Fresno Nightcrawlers dressed up in a suit. Kind of like the three kids in a trench coat. Well, he's still three kids in a trench coat, so no. What was it? I don't know. You know what I'm talking about. Paul McCartney died in the 60s and they hired someone to take his spot. If you look on the back of the album, Paul McCartney is the only one with his back turned. So in that same picture, George is looking downward with his finger pointing towards a set of lyrics that say, Wednesday morning at five o'clock as the day begins. And that is the time that Paul McCartney allegedly got in his car wreck. Paul's wearing this uniform with the patch it says OPD, which some fans think means officially pronounced dead. At the end of the song, I'm so tired. It sounds like John's just muttering at the very end, but when they reversed it, it says I do love a good Beatles conspiracy. I mean, I've heard that one before, but never so eloquently put. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe it was all a plot to destroy the Beatles and the peace-loving movement. Could have been. Do you guys have any favorite, like, music conspiracies or celebrity conspiracies? Those are always the most fun, because everybody knows who these people are. They're way better than political ones. Oh, I'll just cut that, because uh, they're so much more fun than government conspiracies, even though they're often intertwined. So yeah, if you have any favorite celebrity or music conspiracies, let me know in the comments. And maybe I'll do a video about them in the future. Chinese government won't tell you they found the last dire wolf, a 10 feet massive predator of prehistoric times. Nestled between the mountains of China during the late 1980s, they built a secret research base. This classified operation was labeled Zone Q. Their mission was to explore the possibility of prehistoric creatures still hiding among us. This amazing discovery came to light when explorer and wildlife enthusiast Jackson Hart made it public just a month ago. On August 16th, Jackson was trekking through the vast mountain valleys of China. His journey led him to an isolated field hidden between the mountains where a mysterious structure stood at the center as Jackson approached the vastness of the facility became evident beside the main entrance an inscription read zone Q property of the Chinese government authorized personnel only he cautiously made his way inside the facility navigating through its maze like corridors filled with numerous rooms as he wandered a deep howl from one of the rooms froze him in place as he looked inside he was shocked there was a massive wolf much larger than any modern species walking inside this impressive creature had a muscular build, weighing close to 300 pounds and a length of 10 feet. Grabbing his phone, Jackson started to film the wolf. He later shared the video online, and it rapidly became a sensation. After sharing the video, stories of Jackson's bravery spread. Oddly, no one has seen or heard from him since. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, 
All I can say is you guys are lucky that I try to fix stuff like that while I'm editing because that just made my ears bleed. Ugh, I hate it when they just make things loud just to be loud. It was creepy. Okay, it was creepy. You didn't need the laugh to be that loud. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about because I probably fixed it. Welcome. I'll be good. Strange videos found on the deep web. Dirty animal facts that biology <laughs> class definitely didn't teach you, part three. The cat sex chemical in plastic bags are almost identical under a microscope, so if you catch your cat licking a plastic bag, it's probably because it's making it sexually aroused. If a dolphin nutted inside you, your organs would explode from the sheer force and speed of its climax. Blue crabs will eat anything within a few days and mutilate the bones beyond recognition. When spotted hyenas give birth, the pups have to pass through a half PP, half clitoris birth canal, meaning they literally have to claw their way into the world or suffocate trying. Barnacles have the highest schlong to body size ratio in the animal kingdom. Platypus don't have nipples. They just kind of sweat milk. Tapers have prehensile peepees, meaning they can grip with it. This is especially useful during mating because the males can use it to hold the females in place. Here are some facts that you probably didn't know that one day could save your life. If your pupils don't dilate to the same size, there is a very real chance you have brain damage. A motorcycle helmet is stronger than a skull. Tea bags actually stop bleeding. They contain a chemical <laughs> called tannic, which naturally clots your blood. If you're in the wilderness and desperately need water, you can take a plastic bag and hold it against the branch of a willow tree, and it will condensate drinkable water into the bag. Never put tools or heavy objects on the back seat or dash of your car. If you get into a crash, you might survive the collision, but these items could be the cause of your death. If you see vultures circling above you, chances are there's a predator nearby and it's about to make a kill. Grapefruits can actually mess with prescription medication and the most common of these is birth control. So stay away because trust me, you do not have the time for a grapefruit baby. If a canker sore in your mouth or tongue isn't going away after two weeks, you might want to get it checked out because it very well could be oral cancer. Bro started out that list saying that helmets are stronger than skulls. Like, that's groundbreaking. I think that's kind of the whole point of a helmet, right? Uh, the rest of that was pretty interesting, and some of it was useful, so... You know, it's fun. I like that guy's videos. Good storyteller. Let's go watch this guy fail at jumping off a cliff. The scariest close calls with death. Watch as this guy base jumps off of this cliff, but he fails to jump far enough. Just look how close he was oh to hitting the cliff God. in this frame. He then pulls the parachute and this happens. The parachute got tangled up sending him straight into the cliff. Thankfully he did survive and he was rescued from the cliff edge 17 hours later. Follow for more This baby fell 11 floors from her grandfather's arms. On July 2019, 18 month old Chloe and her family were vacationing at the Royal Caribbean Cruises in Puerto Rico when her grandfather sat her at the window ledge and she fell 11 floors to the ground. Chloe's grandfather, Salvatore Anello, says that it was all an accident and he thought the window was closed. He said he leaned Chloe against the window because that's what she likes to do. Chloe's mother, Kim, was devastated, but she does stand by her father and says that the cruise was negligent and should have never had an open window by a kid's play area. Chloe's family says she fell through that open window set to slide open to provide ventilation in what's known as the H2O zone aboard the cruise ship. A family attorney says the toddler's grandfather, Sam, placed her on a railing to look outside, believing he was lifting the toddler behind a wall of glass. After the cruise ship reviewed their surveillance footage, there seems to be more to the story. But ship video, first shown on TV in Puerto Rico last month, shows Anello leaning out the window for about eight seconds while Chloe is still on the ground. Then he lifts the girl up and over a wooden rail. He held her for about 34 seconds before she slipped from his arms. Royal Caribbean says the video proves Anello had to know the window was open and recklessly lifted Chloe over the window. Salvatore pleaded guilty to negligent homicide and was sentenced to three years probation. I saw a creature in a huge black forest and friends, cryptids. 
three years of probation. There are people serving life sentences for drug offenses and nonviolent crimes. And this dude gets three years of probation for chucking his granddaughter off a cruise ship. A very old pub in York, England is hiding a rather sinister secret. In 1816, a large hole was uncovered which led to a secret dungeon. Mm. The spooky dungeon was complete with manacles and chains hanging from the walls. Around this time, a tunnel was also found that was said to lead to the York Minster. However, the superstitious locals soon bricked it up, claiming they could hear ghostly footsteps echoing from the tunnel. And those who went down by candlelight claimed to see phantom shadows. This spooky pub was a former jail on the walls of York. You can see behind me an original window from the jail and it actually gives the place its name, the hole in the wall. <laughs> Creepy laugh alert. Spooky. <laughs> so being a former jail has strong links to the fact that a dungeon was discovered in the pub. But the hauntings don't end there, of course. I got chatting with the bar manager who showed me this photograph taken around Christmas time last year. You can see a large mist that appeared on the photo. Even stranger, the boy stood by this, claims to have felt a phantom. Seems like another fun place to add to the list of places I want to go. So, but yeah, sounds fun. Let's go. Sign me up. Throw me in the dungeon. Have you ever heard of the Filipino urban legend of the Duende? Nice. The Duende is a mythical creature in Filipino folklore. These supernatural beings are believed to be small, dwarf-like creatures with pointed ears and beady eyes. Duendes are said to inhabit natural environments such as forests, mountains, and ancestral lands in the Philippines. Duendes are known for their mischievous nature, often playing pranks on humans or causing minor disturbances. They are believed to be guardians of nature, residing in anthills or small termite mounds known as punso. Disturbing or disrespecting their dwelling can bring bad luck or misfortune. In Filipino culture, people have various beliefs and practices associated with the duendes. Some offer food or small gifts to appease them and seek their favor or protection. It is common for individuals to avoid stepping on anthills or disturbing natural habitats that may house duendes out of respect and superstition. Duendes are deeply ingrained in Filipino folklore, reflecting the country's rich mythology and belief in supernatural creatures. The stories of duendes serve as a reminder of the importance of living in harmony with nature and respecting the unseen beings that may- There we go, nice little educational video for everybody. And now we know the history of the duendes, where the folklore comes from. That's cool. I would like to go to the Philippines someday and meet a duende. Go to the Philippines. Respectfully. I mean, no disrespect to the duendes or the Filipino culture. They just seem cool and I want to meet one and maybe put them on my YouTube channel. <laughs> I want to I interview a duende. That's another ultimate goal for this channel. Interview a duende and get the people of Sentinel Island to watch my videos. Those are my ultimate goals for this channel. Tight. So there you have it, folks. That is 25 Days of Creepy in the books. We did it. We done it. We're doing it some more. If you enjoyed this series and you missed it, be sure and check out my TikToktober series where I did another 31 Days of Reactions for October. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you never miss a new video next month i will be back to my regular posting schedule of tuesdays and thursdays and you never know when i might drop a random video so turn that notification bell on too thank you so much for tuning in merry christmas happy holidays i appreciate you guys hope you have a very wonderful holiday merry christmas or you know insert your holiday here if you have any suggestions ideas comments concerns please let me know in the comments if you have anything you'd like to see me cover or a topic then let me know in the comments keep an eye out next month i'm going to start a brand new reaction series i will still be doing the creepy videos reactions but i'm also i'm going to do another one as well and yeah i'm going to try it out and see if people like it and if you like it i'll keep doing them and if not then you know i won't <laughs> and until next time which is next year maybe sooner we'll see stay creepy